and we're back for part three. Chapter eight, training camp. We headed for my house, training camp. Joey was my coach first. He says, that crybaby stuff, gotta go. How? I said. You still have your E.T., don't you? Sure. My parents had given me the videotape movie for my birthday. I bet you start bawling every time E.T. dies, don't you? Well, follow me. He stuck my E.T. cassette in our v VCR and ran it fast forward to where E.T. dies, where everybody thinks he dies. As usual, the waterworks come on. My eyes, my cheeks were like Niagara Falls. Joey punched rewind, stop, play. E.T. died again. I cried again. So it went, time after time, until on the 22nd try, Joey ran his fingertip across my cheek and nodded, dry. He turned on the light, got in my face like a doctor. Your eyes are a little watery, but nothing falling out of them. He held out his hand. You're on your way, rat. I gave him five. Next was spiders. Joey found one, trapped it in a paper cup, and brought it to me. I was sweating and shaking. Hold out your hand. I can't, I told him. You want Judy Billings to like you or not? What if it's a black widow? I shuddered. It's not. Or a tarantula? It's a little white house spider. Hold out your hand. I can't. It won't move. Joey made it move. He grabbed my hand and dumped the spider onto it. He was right. It was a little white house spider. But to me, it looked like a tarantula. I screamed and flipped it away. He was right. When I got to the ninth little white spider, I was still flipping, but I was doing it silently. Joey sighed. Well, at least we got rid of that scream. He clapped his hands. Okay, up to the roof. No, I said. Move, he said. I went upstairs like I was walking to the gallows. You know what gallows are, right? That's where they have the hanging rope. Even more than spiders, I'm scared of high places. Joey steered me to my bedroom window. He made me open it. Out, he said. No, I said. Outside my window is the roof of our front porch. No way, I said. I sat on my bed. I finally agreed to do it under two conditions. One, I take off my shoes and socks to get a better grip on the roof. And two, we tie me to a rope. We tied one end of the rope to the bed. The other end, good and tight, went around my chest under my arms. I climbed down, I climbed out and sat on my windowsill. Out, he said, to the edge. I lowered myself from the sill. I sat on the roof. I dug my fingers and toes and rear ends into the pebbly shingles. I inched forward. My heart felt like an exploding football in my chest. I was halfway to the edge when the sidewalk below started to get wavy. Then the bushes got fuzzy. Then everything was turning around like the inside of a clothes dryer. Next thing I knew, I was hanging off the edge of the porch roof, swinging in the air above the front steps. Just then, Zipper Nose came out. The look on her face said, I'm imagining seeing my brother hanging from the roof. I'm having a hallucination. Call somebody, I told her. Get me down from here. She half turned, ready to obey me for the first time in her life. Then she spotted my feet, my bare feet. This time, the look on her face said, I may never get this chance again as long as I live. She rushed me. She grabbed my legs in a bear hug and started tickling the bottoms of my feet. We, the Mortons, are a ticklish family. Extremely. By the time my mother finally came out and chased zipper nose off and got me down, I was about dead from laughing. For my next test, Joey led me to the little kid's playground at the park. What are we doing here? I asked him. You'll see, he said. We waited, watching the little kids. After a while, Joey said, You hungry? A little. For a Twinkie? Yeah. Sponge cake, creamy inside. I love them. Go for it, said Joey. He pointed to a little kid. He was eating a Twinkie with one hand. The other hand held another Twinkie. You don't need two, Joey whispered. I can't, I said. Take care of number one, 
I can't. Judy Billings, Judy Billings. The kid was passing us. I reached out. I snatched the uneaten Twinkie. The kid howled bloody murder. I shoved the Twinkie back in his hand and took off. Last test, last chance. We hung around my room, waiting for my mother to ask me to do something. When she does, Joey said, you know what to say. Sure enough, pretty soon my mom showed up. She said, Suds, will you excuse yourself from Joey long enough to empty your wastebasket, please? Silence. Joey waiting. My mother waiting. Judy Billings waiting. The world waiting. I couldn't stand it. Maybe she hadn't smiled. Maybe she hadn't said please. I said, okay, Mom. As soon as my mother left the room, Joey gave me a disgusted grunt. He pointed to my one-eyed teddy bear. I guess you're not going to throw that baby thing away either, are you? I looked at the bear, at him, in shock. Nah, I didn't think so, he sneered. Better forget it, Morton. You'll never hack it as a rat. He got up and left. I emptied my wastebasket. I figured he was right. I figured I was dumping my chances with Judy Billings out with my trash. But I didn't figure on what happened Monday at school. Chapter 9. You want a rat? It was lunchtime. I took my tray through the food line, as usual. Looking, I waited for Joey. As I was waiting, I saw a sight that made my eyes pop. Judy Billings was sitting a couple of tables away by herself. Usually, she was surrounded by girlfriends. Judy Billings alone. I couldn't believe it, and I couldn't pass up the chance. Walking over to her table was as scary as walking on the roof, but I did it. I sat down next to her. Hi, I said. Mind if I sit here? She kept looking at her grilled cheese sandwich. Yes, she said. I giggled. I grinned. I was thrilled. Yes. It was the first word she ever spoke to me. I would remember it forever. Yes. 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 I said I mind, she said. Oh, I said. What should I do? I was in too deep to back out now. Okay, I said. I got up and sat down on the other side of her. This better? No. She kept speaking to the grilled cheese sandwich. Did you think I was the sandwich? I felt my chair move. I looked up into the face of Gerald Willis. He was pulling my chair backwards. When it was away from the table, he tipped it forward, and I slid off to the floor. I was, it was the bench at the talent show all over again, only worse. I got up. I slunk away. Kids were laughing. One of them was a third grade angel eating a piece of chocolate cake. I didn't take, I didn't take from the, I'm sorry, I didn't take the cake from the angel's hand. I just shoved his hand, cake and all, into his face. Then I mashed them around. The whole joint was howling. As I walked out of school that way, that day, Judy Billings happened to be right behind me. This time, I didn't hold the door open for her. I let it shut in her face. I went straight home and up to my room. With one swipe of my hand, I sent my whole matchbox car collection flying from the top of my bookcase. I probably would have destroyed my room right then if, hadn't, if I hadn't headed for the bathtub. No tugboat and dinosaur this time, just me and the water. I didn't turn it off until it was up past my belly button. I sank into it as deep as I could. I wanted to pull it over me like a blanket. I wanted to forget that day. I wanted to forget fourth grade. By the time I got out, I thought I was feeling better, but I was wrong. As soon as I got back to my room, I punched Winky, my bear. At dinner, Zippernose smirked and sneered and snickered until my mother finally said, What is it? I can't tell, giggled Zippernose. I'll get in trouble. If you don't stop that carrying on, you, you'll be in trouble. Okay, I'll tell. My mother looked at me. I'm not sure I even want to know. I'll let Suds tell me about it later if he wants to. No, screeched Zippernose. I want to tell. And before anyone could stop her, she told about Gerald Willis and the chair, about the third grader and the cake in the face, about the whole place laughing. 
Bubba was going into spasms over the cake scene. My parents just stared at me. My mother looked hurt. That doesn't sound like you, Suds, she said. They were laughing, I reminded her. Are you going to attack everybody who laughs at you the rest of your life? Yeah, I said. Maybe I will. I got up from the table and stomped off. Take a bath, my mom, my mother called. I did. Take another. I took another. Didn't do any more good than the first. I decided to go to bed early. Get myself unconscious as quick as possible. I put on my PJs, turned out the light, and got under the covers. I felt something with my foot. What could be under there? It felt like wood. It felt like... Snap! Yeah! Suddenly, I was on the floor, and the mouse trap was on my big toe. I pried it off, went to the door, yanked it open. I heaved the trap down the hallway and screamed, Okay, you want a rat? You got a rat! Chapter 10 no. For the next two days, I went on a rampage. If I saw a little kid with a Twinkie I wanted, I snatched it from him. If I saw a little kid on a swing, I pushed him off, whether I wanted to use it or not. I laughed in class during silent reading. The teacher told me to stop. I kept laughing. She gave me detention after school. My first ever detention. I laughed all through it. Instead of putting candy wrappers in my pocket, I threw them on the street. I walked across people's front lawns. I rang doorbells and ran. My mother put a new clean a new box of Klondike bars in the freezer. I ate them all. My mother put in I stuck chewing gum on my bedpost. I left my dirty clothes on the floor. The next time Bubba, Bubba bared his fangs and went what, 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 I said, That's my name. Badness is my game. And I tied him to the bathroom doorknob. I snuck up on Zipper Nose. She was in her room, lying on her stomach on the floor, reading, wearing socks. I pounced. I plunked myself smack on the backs of her legs. In a second, I had her socks off. Most times, when I tickled her, I would stop when she started screaming. This time, I didn't stop. She laughed and screamed and bawled herself blue. I didn't stop until my father pulled me off. She shook me by the shoulders. What's getting into you lately? Nothing, I said. Just getting her back. What was getting into me? Even I didn't know. Didn't care either. All I knew, whatever it was, it felt good. It felt great. Why had I waited until so late in life to have my first rampage? Joey was right. Angels finish last. No more last for me. This dude was headed for the gold medal. I ran upstairs. I pointed at Winky. You're holding me back, I told him. You're out of here. I opened my window and punted him into the backyard. There was only one thing left to do. My chance came next morning. I was getting ready for school. My mother poked her head into my doorway. Pick up this floor before you go, she said. It's a war zone. She was already gone from the doorway when I sent my answer. Don't have time. She appeared again. Pardon? Don't have time, I repeated. It'll only take a minute. Make time. After school, I said. Now, she said. No, I said. Before she recovered from the shock, I was past her and down the steps. I'll see you when you come straight home after school, she called as I breezed out the door. The next voice I heard was a whole lot different. I was a half a block up the street when I heard it behind me. Hi, Suds. I turned. Not that I had to turn to see who it was. I could have picked Joey Billings' voice out of a million. She was smiling. She was looking at me. I wasn't a grilled cheese sandwich, after all. We walked to school together. Judy did most of the talking. She kept telling me how famous I was. Everybody was talking about me. But I was only half hearing. I was in a daze. I just kept looking at how be her beautiful face and thinking, Man, wow! I'm walking to school with Judy Billings. I don't believe it. Well, I heard her say, could you? I snapped out of my days. Huh? Could I what? Let a bee sting you on the arm like Joey Peterson did. Sure. No sweat. For Judy Billings, I would have let an addict alligator sit on my arm. But we couldn't find any bees. So she said, how about a spider? 
Why not? I said, playing cool, trying not to sound nervous. We started searching the gutter and sidewalk and all the walls of people's houses. I spotted a couple of spiders, but I didn't say anything. Then Judy called, Here, look! It was on somebody's brick wall. It wasn't a little white house spider. It wasn't little and it wasn't white. It was poking along toward a window. Just put your hand here in front of it, Judy said. Let it crawl right on. She was excited. Her eyes were wide. Her voice was squeaky. Could be a black widow, I said. So? It won't bite unless you're mean to it. She was staring at me, waiting. The last ten minutes had been the best ten minutes of my life. Was I going to give it all up because I was too chicken to touch a stupid insect? I put my hand on the wall, flat. The spider went around it. Did it. I did it again. The spider climbed aboard. Judy shrieked. <gasps> no! She put, pulled on my other arm. Come on! Where? I said. School! They have to see! By the time we got to the schoolyard, the spider was up around my elbow. A tiny-footed nightmare on my skin. Judy called. Look, everybody, look! Kids came running. They jerked to a stop when they saw. They gasped. They gawked. It's a black widow, she announced to them. He's doing it for me. The spider was up on my shoulder now, headed for my back. I couldn't see it anymore. I kept my face cool, but I was praying. Please don't go on my neck, especially don't go down my shirt. The bell rang. Everybody ran for the door. Nobody was looking. I swatted and twisted till I was sure the spider was gone. At morning recess, I was mobbed. Mobbed. Wow, suds! A black widow. Black widow, man. Weren't you scared? Oh, suds. Judy was mobbed, too, mostly by girls. He did it for you? I guess we're both famous. Uh-oh. Change is coming. <laughs>